144 feet above the Duwamish River, as thought with a new insight into what caused the West Seattle Bridge to fail. And although they designed the bridge with post tensioning strand to the standards of the time, it turned out to be not strong enough. Uh, for the bridge to carry out its useful life as designed. Steel inside the concrete stretched beyond its limit, causing SDOT crews to shut down the bridge. That's the main access to West Seattle. It happened on the same day coronavirus restrictions went into place in March of 2020. And I'm going to use three points of contact. A year and a half later, we get an up close look at the progress. We're both underneath and inside the West Seattle Bridge. Above me is the deck where traffic would normally go. I want to show you some of the changes that have been made in the last year to make this safe. These pipes are full of steel. Collectively, they add 4 million pounds of tension to the bridge. Mitigation that they say is working and has stopped cracks from spreading. Uh, for me, this is a maintenance and inspection success story because because of our maintenance and inspection program, we were on the bridge doing our inspections as, we're, as required to do to catch that cracking when it started. Speaking of which, see all those Sharpie marks? Those are the cracks in the concrete that SDOT is now using sophisticated technology to track. Shorter gauges to just cross one crack are to measure data that's sent in real time to crack. engineers' cell phones. Longer gauges that span several cracks. A meticulous process for crews that will ultimately, at the direction of the mayor, repair the bridge rather than replace it. Now that we know that we, we want to repair it, put traffic back on it, we'll add enough carbon fiber reinforced polymer and steel to have traffic back on the bridge. The good news in all of this, SDOT says they are right on schedule with a predicted reopening sometime in mid-2022. In Seattle, Sebastian Robertson, King 5 News. Total repair costs predicted to top $47 million. Earlier this year, the Seattle Department of Transportation received more than $11 million in federal funding for the project. That money came from the Infrastructure for Rebuilding America grant awarded to the state by the U.S. Department of Transportation.